in releasing these diesel generators. And all of a sudden, everything got restored, and they showed the trucks carrying away <laughs> the diesel generators. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, their hydroelectric was working because they had year-round flow of water in a drought. So all that we're looking at here in the world has a core value of it works. It's not working, but it is working. We just have to shift our awareness. We have to come together. We have to work together. We have to do with less for a little while in order for us to have the abundance of the world that is working. Same way with your body. Same way with your emotional body. Same way with your mental body. If you just realize that you have depleted it and you need to take the pressure off of it, for example, what do you think this posture is doing? Giving you some sense of hope and enthusiasm or depression? What is this? Huh? Body languaging, this means a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Huh? This means, whoa. And what do you think this is? Giving you a sense of, I can't do anything? <laughs> or, wow, look at me. I'm ridiculously standing on one peg. <laughs> right? This, this gives you hope. This gives you a sense of, I am balanced. Mm -hmm. Because isn't balance in that community what has restored? And isn't balance in your life what is restored? And if you have balance, isn't your relationship with people around you restored? And then when you decide to take action, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, don't focus on somebody, but I just looked and I <laughs> right? When you decide to take action, and that action has meaning, that has a restorative, that has a return effect, doesn't it? That I've taken action and it's a meaningful action because it's followed that balance, it's followed that sense of great hope, and then I can come back into that neutral posture, in param karam dharam kriya, I can come back into that neutral posture, and I can know, not just hope, not just wish, I can know. I can know that what it is that I desire can be turned into what it is that I require. Hmm. And if I turn my desires into requires, then I will be very conscious of what I desire. And what I desire will be very conscious as well. And if I realize that if I am feeding those around me, physically, emotionally, mentally, <clears throat> existentially, that that's part of the pulse that comes back to me so that my arcs are working one on top of the other. It's part of that pulsation flow that goes around me. Talk about uh, a practical realization my wife and I put up a very large tent every solstice because we have a joy with a very large tent. We've had this tent since the late 70s. And everybody knows this tent. It's where wake-up starts. It's where we all gather at 2.30 in the morning. And the one thing, it's a canvas tent. It's very, very hefty. And the one thing that is really wonderful about solstice is that solstice keeps going and going and going, and then all of a sudden it's over. <laughs> and you have to pack all this stuff, and you have to haul it. This year, six people all came to us and said, can we help? Hmm. Wow, that was a good question. Of course you can. <laughs> we would love it. 
what would normally take us two or three hours took about 30 minutes. <laughs> and, and no one person worked very hard. That is the nature of nature. That is the nature that over these millions and millions and billions of years, nature in the physical form has formed efficiencies. And your body is one of the most efficient units. And your body is the only body that remains standing in a bipedal in a two-legged way. And so you're very efficient at this very, I mean, you spend a great deal of your day balancing on one peg. And it's just this incredible flow. In every moment, there is joy. If in that moment of you wheeling around to answer somebody who you feel has insulted you, you would realize, oh my God, look at, look at what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and you were to focus on that instead of that. Energy flows where you're. My tension goes. And you went, oh my God, are you aware of even though I've been insulted, I can still do this. <laughs> then you could have a conversation. And in the midst of that conversation, that person would most likely say, you know, I didn't really mean to insult you. I was having a challenge, and I just sort of flipped off, and you were in the room, and so you caught it, and it wasn't really meant for you. But if you continue to wheel around and attack, now there's a need to defend, and they will in their side, their psyche go, I didn't really mean to uh, do that to them, but boy, I'm sure glad I did, because look at what an idiot they really are, you know? So all of a sudden, these things that are our Events of life take this storyline. And so that brings me to the final component. In Missouri, <laughs> there is a museum. And it's called the Museum of Creation. And the main platform of the Museum of Creation is that the world is 7,000 years old. And I will preface this with, I am not ridiculing this museum. In the museum they had, for years, they had dinosaurs and people. But the little children didn't really understand that the dinosaurs and the people were interacting because they didn't show any interaction because they're just statues. So the curators of the curator of the museum decided to make it look more interactive and they put saddles on the dinosaurs <laughs> so that they could show that the people were interacting with the dinosaurs. <laughs> and then a group of children came through and one of the little children said, well, why, if it's such a peaceful time, do the dinosaurs have such big teeth and horns? Those look like the weapons. So the curator decided that they would put up a plaque. And the plaque reads that these big teeth and these horns are to help the people crack their coconuts. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> Thirty-five percent of the people that live in this country believe in this. Okay. To you, this looks quite ridiculous. But I'm asking you, and the purpose of the story is, where is your saddled dinosaur? What story do you have that to your enlightenment would appear ridiculous because it is just as ridiculous as this everybody has a story let's let these people have their story hmm. what about your story 
Where is your saddle dinosaur? And so I want you, if you have a piece of paper there, I want you to write down the question very clearly. What is my saddle dinosaur? What is the story in my world that when I become enlightened, I will look back at and say, wow. Can you believe that I actually was there at that time? Because every one of us has a saddle on a dinosaur. We can look at others and see their story. I want us to look at ourselves so that we can see ours. I just think it's wonderful that there's a museum in the state of Missouri that actually caters to these people and helps them understand their story. I think it's wonderful. I think it's fantastic. Every child needs a good place to play. And the planet Earth is definitely a daycare center. All right? So take hold of your knees. Stir the bowl of the pelvis. <laughs>